everybody. So what is going on? As the end of the year approaches, today's video is going to be an interesting one because I feel like this is something that I should have been doing the last three years I've been doing YouTube videos. I am now going to call this the Ghost Awards. This is going to be a culmination of all of the van tours that I have done and I'm going to pick some of my favorites and I'm gonna have some categories and I'm gonna pick some winners of the best bands that I have seen, some that I haven't toured. I'm gonna give some honorable mentions out there to other uh, vans or builders. We're gonna get into all of that in this video right now, so stay tuned for a wild ride of the Ghost Awards. All right, guys, if you guys are new to my channel, consider subscribing. What I do here is pretty much anything tiny living situated or adventure or travel related. I do a variety of vlogs, whether it's van life related or touring uh, vans or tiny homes or unique style living. I also do vlogs on information uh, in regards to building, how to, or anything of that nature. Every now and again, I get to travel myself and I'll do a travel or adventure vlog as well. I will go to events, hopefully soon, and we will bring you along for that ride. This is actually a temporary setup because I'm actually building out my YouTube studio where I can give more in-depth and better vlogs. I have a better backdrop, although I kind of like this backdrop right now with my fireplace going. Uh, it is sitting on a temporary desk uh, that I am in the process of making. It is not done yet. Uh, I do a lot of epoxy woodworking and if you can look closely, the desk has holes in it and inside those holes are going to be an epoxy, uh, different colors all throughout this entire desk with lights coming up from underneath. If you want to check out my website, go to jaritachi.com for more information as well as uh, consultation and uh, my merch line will be coming out very soon uh, through uh, YouTube and my website. Uh, enough about me and enough about that. Let's get into what this video is about. Uh, I have my laptop here in front of me. Uh, I've got my coffee, thank goodness, and uh, notes on my cell phone. Uh. Now, at the beginning of the video, I did mention that this is going to be the Ghost Awards or my friends, uh, a couple of my friends actually called it the Ghosties. <laughs> uh, if you do like this video, please comment below and let me know if you do like this and you want me to continue doing this every year. I would like to do something along these lines and if it's possible, I'd even like to create awards and give them out to the people that I give the awards to. I think that would be really fun and really cool. So if you do like that, I think this would be a cool idea that I do every year at the end of every year in December, possibly January, and I give out these awards and I'll create a little award. I'll, I'll pay for it. I'll ship them out to people. It'll, kinda, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. I like it. I like the idea. Uh, for this year and this year's award show, I'm only going to be doing finished vans and I'm only going to be doing vans. I'm not going to really talk about tinies or overlanding rigs. Although in the future, my channel will be uh, not just vans. It'll be vans, tiny homes, unique style, any type of unique living and adventure rigs or overlanding rigs. However, I am not going to talk about my own builds because my vans were gonna win every category I give, right? <laughs> no, I'm kidding, obviously. That, that would be just not fair for me to throw in my van for best this or best that. Uh, although I loved my two van builds, I will not include them in any of these awards. I also will take into effect that I'm only going to do vans that I have seen in person, whether I've put them on my channel or I physically have seen them at, a, at shows, events, festivals. Uh, I'm going to give honorable mentions to the ones that I have seen possibly on Instagram, Pinterest, uh, Facebook, or, uh, or YouTube. I'm not going to be given a specific award for those people only because I need to physically see them in person. I need to see build quality. I need to see the fine details of every van. I'm trying to be as fair as possible. So let's start with the awards right now. All right, so these are random categories that I just thought up uh, shout out to my friend Caitlin. Uh, we're still friends to this day. When I understand she still has her van, but she was my very first van tour almost three years ago. I didn't know what I was doing when it came to touring other people's vans. I actually uh, split that video up into two videos because I was so excited and so jazzed up about doing uh, that type of video. So uh, shout out to Caitlin. I just spoke to her the other day. She's doing great. The first award is going to be the most unique. There might be a couple co-winners, I guess you could say. Uh, for each one. The most unique, I would say, goes way back to the first year that I was doing tours, which was a DEA spy van. 
It was a van that was built, that was bought at a government auction, a 1990s, I believe, DEA spy van. It really wasn't a build out, but I think it was really cool to kind of see and tour. I did a van tour of uh, the PACA company. I think that they were really cool and uh, they were traveling around the country or at least the western side of uh, the US with um, two alpacas. So most unique would go to the DEA spy van and the Packer company van because I feel that those, those two bills were kind of really unique. The best low budget or budget friendly vans that I have seen. There's actually two here that really hit it home for me when it came to budget friendly. Uh, my friend Christian uh, that did a uh, did his first van build out of a Ford Ecoline. Again, that van was not expensive. It was a used Ford Ecoline. It was just a uh, a very simple van build. The power system was a Goal Zero battery. We're gonna start seeing a lot more of those in the future where it comes to bigger power sources all in one. It wasn't a high roof, so you couldn't stand in it comfortably. However, it was a very nice, mobile-friendly, budget-friendly van. The other winner, I would say, budget-friendly-wise, would be my friend Marty and his girlfriend Colette, they kind of cut, they, I don't want to say cut a lot of corners, but shout out to Marty, uh, you did it man. Oh, they did a great job, they did a great job. Uh, they somehow spent under 10,000 and they had uh, you know, a couple lithium batteries. Granted, they had some help from some professional van builders, but they still did a budget friendly van build. Good. Good job, Marty and Colette. Best layout. This is going to maybe, maybe cause some controversy between a lot of my friends and a lot of the people watching this. The best layout, I'm actually gonna give to my friend, Paya. Now granted, she had a, a 3500 Promaster Extended. So this thing was a big old van. So she had plenty of room to work with, but the layout in general, I really enjoyed it because it felt very open. She didn't have any upper cabinets in like the seating bed area, slightly elevated. Uh, she was a solo female traveler. She had the bed as a twin bed, but it could convert to a full king if she needed it to. I loved her shower. It was massive. And just for everybody that calls me creepy on that video, I was very, very, very excited to tour that van. It was a six month wait for me to tour that van. As amazing as a human she is, I just want to say that I was way more excited about the van and her brain because she is super smart when it comes to building and designing her van. So shout out to Paya, best layout. Best van to be stealth or to be in a city. Uh, I don't think there's any questions here. I think it goes to Buck SD or Brandon. I did a, his second van tour with him recently. His first van was really amazing that I did. Although he's built like five, six or seven of them total. However, I've only shown two of them on my page. This type of van is something that I would want to have a job in the city and I could live out of it very comfortably and literally have a traveling condo. That is Brandon's Buck SD's design in a nutshell. It has everything. It's got the Murphy bed, it's got the massive power system, it had an expandable shower, it had heated floors, it had everything you needed and it didn't stick out like a sore thumb. Of course there is no stealth, right? But it's also blending in with your surroundings. Best family friendly van. Now, my brother might get mad at me because he actually has a family van. However, the best family van that I have seen, again, hands down, I don't think there was going to be a question in my mind about this, was the, the van from Zen Van. They had a 4x4 Sprinter that was a pop top that could sleep for comfortably. Not only sleep for comfortably, but they had an option to seat comfortably. So you could sleep and sit four in a 144 Sprinter 4x4. Amazing. This thing had radiant floor heating, had a 12 volt air conditioner and the best on the market, the, the cruise and comfort. Just clean looking design wise. Uh, everything was bolted to the frame. Nothing was going to come loose on that over time because it was done properly and it was built properly because it was on a 4x4 chassis. Honorable mentioned here, I'm going to say, I've never toured this van, but I've seen it a lot on Instagram. It's, uh, I believe their Instagram handle is This Moving House. If I got that incorrect, I will also put that at the bottom of the screen. I will, I will also throw up some images off of Instagram 
from their Instagram. This moving house, it seems like their layout is remarkable. I don't know what chassis it is. I, I believe this van is over in Europe. Thought everything out. I believe that sleeps four. You got the bed on the bottom, and then you have a double bunk system. And actually, when I saw it, it gives me like a very boat feeling or very yacht feeling to it. Uh, I'm gonna combine a couple categories right now. I don't really know how to like make these categories really different, um, but I, I'm not only gonna combine categories, I'm gonna say about three uh, builds right now. So uh, this is like the best to get lost in the woods with or the, I guess the best adventure rig, or I would say maybe like, the, the or the best build to have like, for like an apocalypse of some sort. Uh, these three, I would say kind of fit that bill. My original tour with Tiny Watch Solar, or also known as Our Land Yacht, uh, that was West and Savannah. Their build, and also shout out to them for one of the best layouts that I have seen. I'll probably put them in the category of best layout as well. It was a complete walkthrough, which was really cool. It had sleeping for two. They had plenty of countertop for cooking and things of that nature. Now, their van was on a 170 uh, Sprinter, so they had a lot of room, uh, but they, they definitely thought everything out. They actually rebuilt, or I should say refaced it, right towards the end, right before they sold it. And I know that because I worked on it. They were the original people that introduced us to the recirculating shower that Van Life Tech was going to have. And they also introduced me to the heated floor system that they had also done by Van Life Tech. Also honorable mention, not honorable mention because I've actually seen this van, but Jason from Off Grid Solutions did a van uh, for a client. It was a 144, had a ton of water storage in it. It was had like a six inch lift on it. I mean, this thing could mow down other vehicles. Had a huge power system from what I remember. I think it had 400 amp hours if I remember correctly. Build of it was very simple, very clean. It wasn't over the top. I believe it had an adventure wagon kit in there. I did say at the top of the video, I'm only going to talk about completed vans. So if the ambulance that Jason worked on was completed, then I'd probably throw that in here. But it still needs to get a lift and tires on it. Ambulance was remarkable. It was phenomenal, actually. I also haven't seen this completed because we were supposed to do a tour, but it wasn't done yet. But the Overland Van Project military truck, it has now been completed. However, I went to Portland to go do a tour of it. And unfortunately, it wasn't done yet. That tour will be coming early 2021. But my goodness, what they did to this, this is more of an outside component thing. The inside is very well built and very thought out. However, the outside of this thing, I mean, where, like, where can you not go? It was on a Stuart and Stevenson chassis. I haven't done a lot of these type of tours, but I will get into it. Obviously it's a four x four, it's a military truck build. I guess you could say that that would be, uh, that that would be one of the best overlanding uh, tours that I did. I haven't done too many overlanding rig tours, but uh, I will do more. That's more of a build out. Let's call a spade a spade. That's a build out. Overlanding rigs, I feel like are Tacomas, Jeeps, Forerunners. This next category is kind of like, I called it the best zen feeling. The, I felt very comfortable inside of this van. When I stood inside of it, when I was touring it, I felt very calm. It was a very calming feeling. Just with the woodworking and how it was done, uh, Quinn from Ever Changing Horizon, his van that I recently toured was just so like, I, there's no other way to put it other than zen feeling it was so I only got about like three more categories left and but the I wanted to throw these in there because I've done a few of these tours uh, but I really feel that they need to be mentioned a little bit more and because I think they're really really well done which are bus conversions so I think bus conversions need to be mentioned in this video that they don't get enough credit schoolies buses whatever you want to call them the best one that I have done was beautiful life or beautiful dot life or life dot what I'll throw up the Instagram but it's there it was a lovely French couple that I toured their design of the bus was just like a rustic meets modern type feel to it. The overall feeling in there was really nice. They had a ton of water storage. Uh, you can obviously put a lot on a bus. Shout out to Our Van Quest. 
I haven't toured their new rig yet. However, I'm gonna honorable mention them here where uh, that I can't wait to tour their newest creation, which is a bus. And I'm going to show that as soon as we are in the same region, I'll drive to them or they will drive to me. The next category I would say would be the most technical advanced van. Now, this is gonna be interesting because I haven't toured a van yet and you guys haven't even seen it. Why is that? Because I wasn't allowed to at the moment. Van Life Tech, which you guys all may, well, if you watch my channel enough, that you may know who Van Life Tech is. The owner of the company is Troy. During the building of that company, he actually had a sister company called Sprinter Tech. Sprinter Tech built vans, and it was done by Troy. Now, when you take one of the most technically advanced companies and you make them into building vans, you get something out of this world crazy which he did. I haven't toured it because our scheduling didn't really line up at the time and the clients were waiting for their van for quite some time because of the amount of technically advanced things that were into this van. It had everything that Buck SD's van had, but better. Not that Buck ST had a bad van or bad systems. Troy's engineering mind and his expertise in certain fields really took it above and beyond on this van that he did. It had the heated floor system. It had three different tanks for water. It had an expandable shower in it. It had a massive walkable solar deck, which I had on my van and I know that they are the best of the best. It had a projector screen in there. Everything, all the gizmos and gadgets, bells and whistles. And it was on a Sprinter. It was on a Sprinter chassis. Now we're gonna have probably the most controversial uh, category for last. It's kind of like best picture in the Oscars, right? I'm gonna get some crap for this one from some of my friends. There's gonna be about four or five ends in this category that I just, you know, and I'm gonna give some honorable mentions too. The best craftsmanship that I have seen. Now craftsmanship is going to be interesting because there's fine detail craftsmanship and then there's overall craftsmanship, right? If we were to talk about fine detail work, I'm gonna have to give that to Mark from Nomadic Customs. Their window rings are phenomenal. The curvature of what they did on the walnut, that fine detail woodworking was really, really thought out and really nice. Overall craftsmanship, I would have to give it to two of the vans that I have toured, which would be uh, Ethan and Belle uh, from, I called it a stealth cabin on wheels. I believe their Instagram handle was live free or try. And their craftsmanship was really well done, mostly because uh, Ethan's dad is a superb woodworker. They, they filled in all the holes or plugs with, I believe, uh, like a redwood or a walnut, but it was a darker wood. And then all of the wood inside of the van, I believe was a cedar or a pine. I don't remember exactly, but it was a lighter tone wood. Every screw that was put through was filled in with a dark wood uh, plug, which was a really nice touch. Another one is my buddy Dave. Uh, he did a really nice uh, I guess call it like a cabin on wheels. Again, another cabin on wheels. The amount of time he spent uh, doing corners and sanding things down. The trim was all done out of either aluminum or steel and then he face framed it all with a cedar paneling or cedar tongue and groove, which if you face something with a cedar, it's really not that easy because of the 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 density of the wood or the the how fragile that wood is the table that he had was i believe like three different types of wood that he married all together i might have been it might have been all redwood actually now that i'm thinking about it but i think it was a redwood maybe some walnut in there he's kind of crazy when it comes to woodworking now he started his own van building company which is going to be interesting because he's working a lot with aluminum now so i can't wait to see what he's comes up with the future as, as well as ethan too what he comes up with in the future i believe he's working on a truck bed system, believe it or not. Honorably mentioned in this category, I have never seen their van in person, but I know that they just sold it and I'm trying to get a tour set up with them. Or the company out in Canada called Live Edge Forest. They built out a van a while ago and they have recently sold it, like I said. Oh my goodness, this is like, this type of style is my style. That's why I'm giving it the award. The committee is just me here, so you know I don't really I don't really discuss it with anybody else. <laughs> but anyways, their van was phenomenal. I don't really know what the systems were like, but the craftsmanship of it, I have to give an honorable mention to them. Absolutely stunning. Uh, from what I understand, they're actually working on another van, and they've also helped me out a lot with a, 
mind would working because I have had several questions of recent. So shout out to them just helping me out, Live Edge Forest. Uh, and I can't wait to see what they do in the future. And when I can, I will get over to Canada and I will tour their whole outfit in there and what they do in regards to woodworking and maybe if they get into some future van designs. Okay guys, that's pretty much it for the award show. Now, I'm not going to do best company because that's just not even fair. That was kind of everything in a nutshell when it came to the last three years of the best vans that I have seen or best builds that I have seen or most unique or whatever you want to call them. Uh, maybe some of you are going to have some arguments in the comments. So if you guys want to uh, stir, up, stir up a storm, comment below and let me know what your favorite van was in the tours that I have done, whether it was recent or whether it was three years ago. Really excited for 2021 and what that's going to entail. My next video is going to be talking about uh, the year to come as well as what it took me to get to 100,000 which is what that is right there. So yeah, guys, that's it. 2021, here we go.